I'm glad to introduce to you Brendan Nyan, who's a political scientist, teaches at Dartmouth, and is very influential in the media world these days because of his work in something people call confirmation bias or the backfire effect. You'll hear more about it from him. Uh, it's also part of your reading and part of what I've talked about. But Professor Nyan is a extraordinary thinker on this incredibly important issue. So confirmation bias, it's helpful to bring, break down into two different ideas. One is that we tend to be more skeptical of information that contradicts our predispositions. And one is that we tend to be less skeptical of information that makes us think we're right. And these are broadly grouped under the heading of what's called motivated reasoning. And the idea is that the beliefs we have about the world depend in part on the preconceptions we bring to that particular question. Well, what we found was that when we gave parents information showing that the MMR vaccine doesn't cause autism, which is a common myth that you'll often hear, it had an unexpected effect. For the parents who had the least favorable attitudes towards vaccines, which is the group that's of the most concern from a public health perspective, giving them information showing that the MMR vaccine, the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine is safe, actually made them less likely to say they would vaccinate a future child rather than more. We think this can be understood as a kind of motivated reasoning. These parents seem to be counter-arguing the idea that vaccines are safe. And what I mean by that is thinking of reasons why they might not want a vaccine or other questions or hesitations they have. And in the process of bringing those ideas to mind, they could actually end up less likely to feel like they should vaccinate a future child rather than more. This is uh, a very common phenomenon with political uh, thinking, is it not? It is, yeah. I think it's, it's common to any issue that people have strong feelings about or that involves central aspects of their identity. So in politics, of course, that often revolves around partisanship and ideology. People uh, tend to feel most strongly about those issues that align closely with their partisan beliefs. And that's where we tend to see the, the strongest motivated reasoning. Now, it's important to point out that there are limits to motivated reasoning. Uh, you know, most people acknowledged by 2000, at the end of President Clinton's term in office, that the economy was good. But you still saw sharp differentials in how good people thought it was between Democrats and Republicans. And that's a pattern we've seen again and again when people get conflicting cues about these controversial issues, they tend to divide very sharply, not just in the opinions they hold, but the factual beliefs they have about them. I, I think members of the public who are savvy news consumers are becoming aware of that problem too. The problem though, is that there's also a 24 seven news ecosystem that likes to cover what's been called the freak show. And, and that often means amplifying the craziest claims that are out there because those are the things that generate clicks. So even if you're saying that the claim is not true, you're drawing more attention to it. And that's why I think that we should all be more careful in what kinds of um, views we choose to give attention to. There's no reason that it may feel satisfying to denounce some kind of misinformation, but if you're posting that link to your Facebook feed or your Twitter feed, you may actually be amplifying it inadvertently. And that's something people should keep in mind. Uh, when I, <clears throat> I, I have a general practice of uh, not pointing to things that I know to be false. Uh, is that a reasonable part of this? I think so. Uh, I, I've even gone so far as when I, uh, when I tweet about a link that I find disreputable, there's a, there's a website called do not link.com that will not give it better standing in search engines. It will, it will break the linkage between my, between my URL and the website in question so that Google won't put it higher 
right? So every link is also making these sites more visible to the consumers who come after you looking for information. Right? So there's a, again, there's a real danger of of of, of giving giving uh, you know attention to things that, that aren't important. I should say though, Dan, just to just to be clear, there is real value in the reputational consequences of people being held accountable for false promoting false claims. And I, and I don't want to suggest for a moment that we shouldn't do that. I think we should do more of that when it's appropriate. When important institutions or public figures say things that aren't true, it's great if real people step up and say this is inappropriate and irresponsible. But on a day-to-day -day basis, simply saying here's this thing and it's not true is likely to be a risky strategy and potentially a counterproductive.